this is my review of Samurai Flamenco. Okay, so in this episode, it becomes apparent that the Flamengers aren't exactly all on the same page all of the time, which makes sense because it's five individuals working under one group, but it's kind of hard to do your job, especially when the suits are supposed to sync up your abilities so that you can actually do things. So, yeah, it, it starts off with the fight against Tetanoid, which goes about as you would expect. He's setting, the, he's setting everything on fire, trying to turn the entire the entire area into a desert first and foremost by set by burning everything down and set and set and masayoshi and the flamengers come in to stop him but they have very differing tactics on what they want to do with 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 blue and green going in after after him alone while the rest of the flamengers set up the super cannon to take him out which works but they but they almost take takes blue's head off so yeah, and also and also Masayoshi expresses that he wants to try and make a relationship with them outside of work, and they initially refuse because they don't really want to be bothered with him. They feel like they don't really want to be they don't really want to be his friend just yet because he's kind of, because he's kind of the new guy and he's also the leader. So that kind of doesn't really bode too well for his ability to make friends outside of work with them. So. So after, so meanwhile, so afterwards he starts pondering about how he's supposed to unite the Flamengers underneath him if he can't even manage to get them to come to dinner with him. And case in point, and throughout this sequence we see that Masayoshi is now so famous as a superhero that he causes people to behave themselves on sight. So, so yeah, he's definitely improved. And also Ishihara is a bit more accepting of his role as a superhero now even though she does still have some questions she wants to ask him most likely how long he's been doing this and why he started but she but she's been having trouble getting in contact with him mean mean and then eventually then masayoshi finally goes in and has a and finally has a reunion with goto to find out what's been going on so apparent so apparently goto was put back on patrol which makes sense he's a cop but apparently harazu Harazuka has had all of his weapons and inventions and stuff like that confiscated by the government, which kind of sucks because he worked hard on them and he wants them to be, and he wanted them to be specifically used by Samurai Flamenco, but now they can't be because they've been confiscated by the government, as I said. And also, apparently Mario Mai has disappeared and Gozo lies to Masayoshi that he doesn't know where she is, but the second, but once he finally leaves, he, he, it's revealed that she's been hanging out in his closet the whole time, sleeping on a mattress that he built up for her in there, and she's, and she's kind of been hiding out in there because she, as she puts it, she doesn't have anywhere else to go, so it's clear that she's trying to nurse her pride because she, because let's be honest, being told that you're not, that you're kind of useless as a hero when you, when you want to try so hard to be, actually be a hero, that hurts. And while I can understand that she isn't the best superhero, she I think she did genuinely believe that she was doing a good job. I mean, and and while she did play play as an act, play it up for an act, I believe she did indeed legitimately enjoy being a hero. And when, when somebody came came along and told her, "No, you're not a you're not a true hero, you because you don't risk your life," that kind that probably kind of stuck with her quite a little bit. And now she's no longer able to actually function as a human being in any sort of capacity, which makes sense because her because she because she did kind of get told that she is kind of bad at her job. So she hasn't shown up for work in a while. She hasn't she isn't doing any hero work. She's basically just chilling out in in Goto's closet. That's really all she's doing at this point. And, I, and I'm and she will eventually regain her confidence. But for right now. She's just kind of chilling in, my, in Goto's apartment, doing really nothing to contribute to society anymore, because she's that wounded from from the from King Torture's speech. So, yeah, so yeah, and the next day, it's actually they actually are filming a documentary on how the Flamengers actually go about their daily business, and we learn a bit of things that we kind of already knew about them, 
like some of their hobbies mostly are new are new but like for example flatman green enjoys walking and that kind of stuff but but for the most part the team the flamengers are the flamengers are just what things we already knew so it's really not much different but but also during this documentary we actually see the fight between triple m 34 and killing joke and it and it's actually revealed that they were actually making five giant rings across japan using using triple m 34's ice abilities which enables them to just basically freeze anything they want and then just break any humans that they don't because they're now flash frozen but but they eventually realize that they are trying to make five rings and are actually planning on assembling the fifth one so they go and intercept triple m34 and killing joke which which they point out is kind of hard because it's two of the four kings at the same time but then but they have managed to pull it off but and but throughout all of this they're kind of a little bit divided on what they should do for example for example flam and pink goes in way too early to use a flamethrower and gets herself frozen which enables them to play decoy but but yeah they are having trouble and eventually they retreat into the into one of the monuments nearby at which point they it's revealed that not all the people who were evacuated got out so they have for hostages for some reason even though they shouldn't be there and well and when and while Flam and Red agrees to go with their proposal nobody else agrees with Masayoshi and some and only like half the, half of the remaining team actually agrees with him but then he formulates a plan to try and unite them all and it works Masayoshi comes in agreeing to their demands only for it to be revealed that they were that they were actually using s sabotage to actually take it, take them out and underhanded tactics which not only causes killing joke to lose his head but it also causes the but it also causes triple m34 to go out the window and before being defeated by the flamengers using their mega cannon however this is when Triple M 34's true power comes into play, and and reveal that there are actually 33 more copies of him, all na all named Triple M 34, and all with varying personalities and appearances, but it's is weird. So they so they try to take so they quickly realize that they can't really attack individually. So so they find so Masayoshi is able to convince them to join up in a group and form a circle to with the, all of their backs to each other and they're able to take out all the units individually and, and with the last but then the last one grows giant as per average while also revealing that killing choke isn't quite dead and is able to regenerate his his face for some reason um but but yeah now they have to take down both of them at the same time and now that the flamengers have all of their abilities synced up they're able to finally use the deluxe parts and transform into transform the robot into Flam and Robo Deluxe, which they're a, which enables them to effortlessly defeat Triple M thirty four and killing Joke, who's running like a coward. So, so yeah, they finally defeat them, and Masayoshi gets a real out of work relationship that he wanted with them because now they're finally agreeing to go to meet him for dinner now, and and at the very least he's happy about that. But don't start cheering too soon because now there's sixty four war gods they need to take care of as as from beyond reveals in another promo so so yeah they have quite the they have quite the challenge ahead of them because there are now 64 of them 64 more people they need to defeat and i must and they only have like one or two episodes to do it so we'll see how this goes um but yeah this episode as a whole just reveals what ha some some of the things that happened in the last arc that can that finally came to a resolution while also enabling Samurai Flamenco to reunite the Flamengers under him. And also that his superhero career has actually kickstarted his uh, his real career, which is now, and are now fueling into each other, making him even more famous than he, than he was previously. Which I guess was kind of the point for why he did it in the first place, but who knows? But yeah, this episode was mainly to just show, to show Masayoshi uniting his team against the common threat because they kind of had their own ideas of what they wanted to do and that's kind of a problem when you're trying to work as a team so yeah he assemble he gets the flamengers to work together and finally and he's finally able to have a working a out of work relationship with them but yeah it's a great it's a great little episode it, but it also sets up a new a new little mini arc where now from beyond is sending sending 34 more monsters out into the world 
So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, if you guys have enjoyed this episode of Samurai Flamenco, what did you guys think? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below or over on my Discord server, link in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter in the description below. And also, check out my page on the description below as well if you want to help support the show. It's only a couple bucks a month, and it really helps me out, so I definitely appreciate it if you did that. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!